Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA, episode 212. I am Brendan. Javante Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia. All right, we're going to go over that fight and that fight only. We're not going over the main card or none of that stuff. Again, Showtime really doesn't want my money uh, for some of these things. You buy a pay-per-view, you watch it, um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating uh, going through the purchasing process, finding out that whatever player you're trying to do on whatever system that you're trying to do it on, it might not work as fluid. Oh my God. It's, I, 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 I know that ESPN plus and the UFC had their issues early on. Um, I, you know what? Who cares about that stuff? You guys aren't here to hear about my, my, me bitching about my inability to use technology when I need to. <laughs> so before we get started, before we're going to, I'm going to break it down round by round. Obviously we know it didn't go the full distance, but we're going to break it down round by round. Uh, kind of talk about what what we saw here and uh, corruption in boxing because obviously that's here. Uh, and then uh, you let me know what you guys thought. Subscribe to the channel if you like this stuff. I put out usually two or three videos every single week talking about MMA. I do boxing. I do like UFC, PFL, 1FC. I did Rise in the other week. Um, a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff. If you like fight breakdowns, I do all that stuff here. Subscribe so you know when the next video is coming out. All right. Let's talk about this. Uh, Javante Davis ends up getting the uh, stoppage finish uh, in between round eight and round nine. Now, uh, he failed to he failed to get off the stool. Um, there, maybe uh, Garcia. He maybe he uh, started to feel it. Maybe he didn't want to get um, get get back off the stool, but he said he couldn't see. Uh, blah 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 blah. There's a there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into it. We're gonna get into that in the end, but I want to actually talk about the match that occurred. Okay, uh, I might slip in between match and fight. Uh, generally speaking, when I'm talking about boxing, I specifically try I try to say match, right? Because it's not fighting, right? You could even consider MMA a match because technically there are still rules, but boxing has a very limited rule set. Right, things that you're allowed to do, okay? Just like you wouldn't call a jujitsu fight. You wouldn't call it a jujitsu fight, right? Okay, uh, you wouldn't call it a wrestling fight. You call it a wrestling match, a jujitsu match, a boxing match. Okay, you wouldn't call it a boxing fight because it's it's just not. If you're going to use that word to describe those things, then you got to use it to describe the other th- two things I said. You call it uh, a taekwondo fight, a uh, karate fight, not a karate match, not a taekwondo match, right? So all the stuff that happens in the Olympics, it's all fighting, okay? But it, generally speaking, I try not to. That's my the way I try to use my vernacular, as I like to say, a boxing match. So you might hear me switch in between there. So if you get triggered by me calling it a boxing fight and you're one of those MMA purists who says, like, oh, this isn't fighting, there's too many rules, I'm kind of on your side, but let's not get so nitpicky. Don't be a dick about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, and again, boxing is not my forte. Um, uh, MMA is kind of my wheelhouse. It's what I watch mostly. But there wasn't any MMA on. I tried. I found some, like, I, I tried to find something. I, I couldn't find anything that I was even semi-interested in. I saw that Gervonta, De- uh, Gervonta Davis was taking on Hector Garcia. I know Gervonta Davis is good. Uh, I've seen some of his uh, matches before, so I was interested in it. So, round one. Uh Javante Davis is a, a traditionally, um, traditionally and uh, historically a slow starter. Right, he doesn't come out and set the <clears throat> set the ring on fire with pressure and volume. And it, no, he's a hard punching counterfighter that likes to sit on his heels and kind of wait for the match to continue. Um, Sorry, not the match to continue. He waits for the match to kind of play out, downloads that information, looks for his openings. He's an excellent boxer when it comes to that stuff because he tends to not take a ton of damage either, right? And because he hits so hard and people are afraid of that, they try not to engage with him in the pocket. Now, Garcia did, and we kind of saw what happened later in the fight. See, I did it later in the match. Um, but in this first round, it was a bunch of nothing. One punch landed for Hector and three landed for Davis, right? Uh, I believe the the Showtime team gave it a 10-10, and he never likes to do that, he said, but he felt like there was nothing to score. So you're allowed to give it. And just I don't want to break down the entire 10-point must-scoring system here, 
But we will talk about how you are allowed to give a 10-10. Now, it, it doesn't usually happen, right? It doesn't usually happen because there's something to score always. But sometimes there isn't. And in this case, there wasn't much to score. One punch landed for Hector and one and three punch landed punches landed for Davis. If he gave it to Davis, I'm on board. I gave it to Davis. I had it 10-9 for him. If he gave it to Garcia, I'm not mad at you. Uh, I could see that. Right, two of the judges gave it to Garcia. Um, I had it for Davis. Now the judges' scorecards. We are going to address those at the end because it is the epitome of what is wrong with uh, scoring system, commissioning, corruption in boxing. It, it, it has all of it, uh, as well as the ending. Um, Garcia was content to stay on the outside, uh, throw out feeler jabs. He wasn't really committing to anything either in the second round, but he was outlanding him. Um, he landed a, a check right hook a few times when Davis entered range, so he would he would he would throw that right right hook as uh, uh, Davis would enter, and he landed a couple of them. Uh, they, they, decent amount of power behind him. You know, they're not. He wasn't put. He didn't put him down with any of them, but it doesn't matter. He scored a lot. Garcia had a, a higher jab count. He landed a few good shots to the body in this round. He really started to invest in the body work. It started in the second round. Obviously, nobody did anything in the first round, so I wouldn't say either one of them started anything other than maybe feeling out how the fight was going to. Damn it! How the match was going to go. And then here in the second round, I felt like Garcia clearly won this one. Right. Uh, he's the one who did something. I don't feel like Davis landed a significant punch that did anything. To be honest with you, I feel like Garcia was the only one doing anything. Um, this was a very easy round to score. Uh, I had it 19 to 19 going into the third. Third round, Garcia landed a counter left straight a couple times. Uh, Davis was leaving openings when he was uh, overextending on his uh, big right hands. And when he did it, like, because when you're moving forward, right, if you're moving forward towards your opponent and they come with a punch, it's going to be added, like, it, the impact gets added in, right? So because of that, those were very impactful, right? Those left straights that uh, Garcia landed were impactful. Uh, Davis was winding up. He was really swinging away. He tried to get this round back. He just didn't do it. Um, he was looking to land bigger shots, but he was missing. Garcia was taking advantage of it, countering really well. Um, the jab and left left hand were landing well for Garcia this round. Another easy round for me to score. I had Garcia up 29 to 28. Now, fourth round here. Uh, Davis was having an issue working past the jab of Garcia, but then Davis landed a few good hooks. Garcia countered as uh, he was countering, um, and they stayed in the pocket, and this is kind of where Garcia didn't necessarily make a mistake, but he, I, I, I guess he um, underutilized his movement going forward from here, and he kind of stayed stationary inside the pocket. Um, Davis landed a heavy right hand. Uh, Davis was pulling away in this round, landing power with both hands, kind of unloading, and then he he coasted to the end of the round with about 15 or about fifteen to 30 seconds left. He really started to lower the pace because he knew he had the round in the bank, and he was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go, let, let this round kind of settle where it is. 38-38, I easily Davis round, okay? Now, Fifth round. This one's a, a, a little bit harder to score, I believe. Um, no, no. Six rounds hard to score. So the fifth round here. Garcia was more aggressive. He had, we had forward mov movement this round. Davis kept was keeping up with him, landing the best shots of the round. And right at the end of the round, I think that he did enough uh, to put him over the top. So I had it 48-47. I had him winning this round. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I had him up, what, three rounds? Three rounds to two at this point. Sure did. Okay. So I had him the first, the fourth, and the fifth I had for Davis up until this point. Uh, Davis was, after this, uh, Davis was swinging really huge. He was missing. Garcia was landing that right hook to the body pretty much every time Davis overextended or put himself in a bad position. David, um, every time he would bend over. So uh, Javanta tends to do this thing where he just, like, bends over, right? It not ducking, not ducking where you uh bend your knees and get low. He literally bends over like staking up the tailpipe. He bends over uh like he's going to pick up some some loose change. And every time he was doing that, it left the body open and Garcia just dug a uh, dug a left hook or uh, sometimes a right hook, but usually it was a left hook to the body. 
Um, the commentary team really wanted Davis to win. Okay, so here here we go. Uh, this is Showtime. This is every single boxing promotion, every single MMA organization, everybody. It's a human trait. We all have favorites. Okay, and if an organization is pushing a, an individual, whether they actively say it or not, there's tendencies by the commentary team, by the judge, not even the judging. The judging is a corrupt system. That I don't even need to get. We're going to get into that. It's it, it's just clear they have a message that you're trying to get across. And when you're mentioning, oh, Davis is waiting. Oh, Davis this. Oh, Davis that. Oh, Davis is going to be doing these things. They're all talking about it from his perspective. Anytime he does something, they talk about it as if it's the uh, <clears throat> the other guys, you know, on the ropes. And he's this is the end of the world for the other guy. And anytime uh, Garcia lands anything, oh, they'll mention it in a passing statement. Like, oh, that was pretty good. Oh, that's good there. Oh, but he's doing this. But oh, but oh, but like oh, they got they have to qualify it with some sort of statement about what Davis is doing, all right? Um, the commentary team really wanted Davis to win. I don't think his shots were as impactful as they they were making him out to be. I had Garcia out like I thought he was outworking him, staying tight on defense. Uh, after six rounds, I had it even fifty seven to fifty seven. Hell, two of the judges who are, are like. Almost, they got to be goddamn blind because of the first couple rounds they scored here. They gave, they gave Garcia, uh, the freaking six round. All right, right. I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not off my rocker to suggest that. They, even the corrupt ass judges can kind of had to give him the six round. So that's what I'm saying. It's like the commentary team. If you listen to the way they talk, go watch, go watch them talk about this six round, and you tell me that it's unbiased or that it's even or that they want anything but Davis to win here. Because if you're if you're gonna listen to that and be honest with you, not only yourself, whether you're a huge Javante fan or not, right? Maybe what if you're a huge Garcia fan? You got to be honest in it and like state your bias up front, right? Even with yourself, I just mean state your bias up front with yourself. Acknowledge your bias. Watch it, listen to it. Like this, 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 this match wasn't that bad. This boxing match wasn't bad. It was actually fun to watch. I thought it was back and forth. It was very close. It was competitive on all senses of the word. I felt like there were two conflicting styles here. It made for a fun, enter- entertaining event while it lasted. Um, and after seven rounds, so in the seventh round, uh, Davis was looking for some. Uh, uh, in between rounds, okay. So here's the shenanigans. There's some shenanigans that happened. So Davis was looking for someone between, like, between rounds after the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh round here. Uh, or uh, sorry, uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth round. He was looking for someone each time. Uh, he'd be like, "Oh, where is he? Where is he?" Uh, there was also a fight with uh, I forget who. It doesn't matter. Some dinglings were fighting in the uh in the crowd. Um. Not cool. Uh, oh, that happened in the next round. Uh, so in this round, Davis was waiting till the end of Garcia's combos, and he was swinging hard. Um, he did land a couple of shots, but Garcia was staying in his face. Um, Davis landed a good right hand. I just didn't feel like enough of his stuff got to the mark. <sighs> so this this round was really close for me. All right, this is the seventh round. This round's really close, and it's not that I feel like I'm uh, biased against Gervonta. It's hearing the way that they're talking. You got if if you want to score it evenly, turn the commentary off and just watch it and try and figure out what's going on. So the round is really close, and you could give it to Davis. I understand if you gave this round's razor thin. So if you gave it to Davis, I understand because the couple shots that he landed, if you put an emphasis on those and say, hey, because he landed with so much power, um, the impact from those shots really gave him the edge in this round. He did way more damage. Uh, I could agree with you, uh, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I could understand that point of view, right? I just felt like Garcia did enough with his volume throughout the whole round, and I don't feel that Davis's shots were doing that much damage. They they hit Garcia hard, but he wouldn't move, and he would back up a couple times, but it wasn't like he was stunned or staggered in this round. The eighth round is when that happened. So, uh... So I gave that round to Garcia. I could understand giving that round to Davis, right? I'm not married to that one. I had Garcia up uh, 67 to 66, right? This was, I dude, I had it razor thin. This each round was, uh, the fight as a whole was razor thin. I had it, you know, back and forth the whole time. But let's say you gave that uh, to Davis. That That's fine. You know, he's up, uh, he's up around 67 to 66. That's fine. It just wasn't a blowout. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. 
Um, and then the second round here, or this, sorry, sorry <laughs> the eighth round here, uh, Garcia started every single round way out in front. I think that was kind of the issue, is uh, Garcia's approach with his volume, his pressure, his just uh, relentless forward movement, it all ended at like a minute into the round, and then it would be more stationary. And that's the problem is Davis would land a few good shots, and that's the last thing that sticks in your head, whether it, uh, oh man. <laughs> Whether he actually did more damage throughout that whole round or not, that's what sticks in your mind more because it happened more recently. And I, I, I really try to avoid that, right? What happens in the beginning of the round has no impact on what happens at the end of the round as far as uh, uh, damage goes, right? Because I've, I've heard this logic from people before that said, oh, well, all the stuff you did in the beginning of the round means nothing if the end of the round I come back and hit you hard because clearly none of that stuff did anything to me. That's not how this works. That's not how that works, right? A punch in second one is worth the punch in the last second of the round. That's that's the way it is, right? A jab, a, a jab with equal force is worth the same amount of points if it happens one second into the round or at two minutes and 59 seconds in a three-minute round like this it's just when it happens at 259 that's the last thing the judges see so in their brain they might have forgotten or it might not seem as impactful as that first jab that got thrown out so i can understand giving the uh why some of those rounds like when you when they're close you could lean towards davis but and that's also a a problem i guess with garcia's uh, Garcia's strategy is he just wasn't able to either wasn't able to sustain it or later in the rounds he wasn't able to uh, keep that movement up to avoid some of the damage coming back his direction again all this was really close though so in this round uh they had to stop because there were some shenanigans going on in the crowd it's such crap I can't stand I cannot believe that that's okay I can't believe that happened that's unreal to me that at the highest level of boxing, we are stopping the boxing match because of a fight going on in the crowd. Are you kidding me? You're actively changing the outcome of the fight. You just are. Whether whether Davis was going to win this or not, it doesn't matter. You are actively changing the outcome of the fight because of stuff that's going on in the crowd. That's unreal to me. Unreal. Uh, I, I They stopped it. You know, both both uh, boxers looked out into the crowd, did nothing, and uh, the ref put him back into the corners and said, you know, hold on, let's wait. I think that's ab- asinine, absolutely unacceptable. Um, anyway, uh, Davis uh, staggered Garcia, uh, beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, he outlanded him until the end of this round. I had it even, 76-76. Um, but you could also have it, you could have had Davis up two rounds, understandable maybe even three rounds you could have had him up I could understand that but uh we are gonna go to the um oh yeah I was like what a load of garbage that it got stopped between rounds Garcia says he can't see out of one eye uh tell me that boxing isn't fixed <laughs> or you know like tell me boxing's fixed without telling me boxing's fixed I... come on guys uh in a competitive fight like this when they're all talking about the the epic money fight that's coming next between Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia, right? Because he's popular. When all the talk is about that, none of the talk is about this fight at the fight at hand. You're gonna tell me that they wouldn't put their their thumb on the scale of this one, or maybe approach Garcia ahead of time, like, hey, you know, maybe around this time it don't come out. <laughs> and the thing is. I, I don't want to accuse Garcia of anything. I don't want to accuse his corner of anything. Maybe he genuinely couldn't see. Maybe he genuinely felt the power of Davis. But also, some of the some of the pundits, these news pundits, the way that they're talking about this boxing match, I don't think they watched it. Let's look at the scorecards. I'll tell you what I mean about them, too, but look at these scorecards, man. Look at these scorecards. You're going to tell me that Garcia only won the sixth round. Go back and watch that second and third round. You tell me how Davis won those rounds, right? The rest of them, fine, fine. But then here's the other thing is the other two judges had the first round for Garcia, but not the second or third. This gets into that situation where 
when it's close, they'll put their thumb on the scale and they'll lean towards the fighter that or the uh, box that's supposed to win, right? Which is, in this case is Davis. Promotionally, he's supposed to win. So they'll put their thumb on the scale when it's a close round. When they have plausible deniability, it goes that direction. Now, someone like Steve Rados over here, you know, he put his thumb on the scale in the first round. I don't even I don't even disagree with him in the first round. But the second round, you know, I guess not a lot happened, so he put his thumb on the scale there, and then the third round, and then he realizes like, oh crap, we've gone this far. Um you know, I, I guess I have to give a round to Garcia, so he throws throws him a bone with the sixth round. Whereas this guy, Wayne Smith, he already threw him a bone in the first round, and he's like, "Oh, I'm good. Time to just skate." You know, I'm just gonna close my eyes, put tens down the board for this guy. Dave Moretti has the most defendable scorecard here, and even him, I disagree with rounds two and three, round two especially. Round two, uh, especially. Three, maybe, because maybe I, I, maybe they thought Davis landed one of those big swinging shots that he didn't land. But round two, he didn't land any of those. Garcia way outlanded him. Andy outlanded him with significant strike. I don't want to hear that. That's garbage. This, this, this is why I say it every time I watch boxing, and it, like and this one didn't come down to the scorecards, right? Dude, Javante Davis won a fight with a jab to the belly button once. A deflected jab to the belly button where the guy collapsed backwards and was like, ugh, ugh. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. Do not tell me. And then everybody had to, everybody had to play, uh, play stupid the next day and like, oh, like write off, write it off. And how, the, oh, you know, if you jab someone right in the diaphragm when they're on the middle of a breath, it can shut down, like it can shut down their system and this and that. Dude, screw off. Screw off. That's not what happened, and you know it. Don't, don't try to hold the water for these corrupt organizations. Don't try to do that stuff. Just say it out front exactly what it is. That's why Teddy Atlas got kicked off, the, off of ESPN because he was talking about corruption in boxing on the biggest platform, the biggest sports network, right? And he got kicked off the off of ESPN for that. I, I know he's back now or whatever, but it, it, that was the Gennady Golovkin, uh, uh, the first fight. With Canelo Alvarez, the sham that that was, the draw, bull crap, bull crap. That's not what that was. We all know it. Everybody who watched that knows it. I don't even think Canelo Alvarez's team thought they won that one, or thought it was a draw. Get out of here. Anyway, so we see stuff like this, right? And it it's gonna it's gonna get thrown by the wayside. No one's ever gonna talk about this because there was an actual there was a stoppage, right? Whether whether that was predestined or not, whether that was legit or not. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And I don't mean that incredulously like, Oh, I can't believe what's happening here. I mean, like when you tell me that a guy says, Oh, Hey, I can't see out of my eye in between rounds in a really close boxing match. I literally cannot believe that he is genuine. I can't. I, I can't bring myself to just take it on his word that he's being genuine. I can't. There's been too many things that have proved that there's too much there's too much evidence to the to the contrary in boxing. There just is. And this is the kind of crap. And that's the thing, is like Gervonta had an excellent match. He do he did amazing here. Right? He had a lot of weaknesses in this that Garcia was taking advantage of, and he made up for it with his power, with his advantages. And he utilized excellent footwork, staying in the pocket, kind of goading Garcia into his fight, his kind of boxing uh, boxing match. And to be honest, like had this gone the distance, I based off what I was seeing, it seemed like Davis was picking up steam kind of working his way in, into the match and finding his opening, especially by the way he got he hurt uh, Garcia in that last round. So do I see Davis ultimately winning this? Yeah, I figure he'll probably win it by like three, maybe four rounds. If he, he probably wins it by like three rounds. You know, Garcia might get one in there. He could win it by more. But these guys had him winning by six rounds. They gave him one round. 
Steve Rados gave him one round out of the eight. One round. He had it seven to one in favor of Davis. Seven to one. This is unacceptable. This is not okay. And it makes it, it, as a fan of combat sports, it makes it really hard to take this sport serious. Even when there's a good match on, like I said, this one came to a definitive end, but I still have my questions because I'm like, well, I can't believe that that happened for real. But let's say it, it like a, an actual knockout that looks legitimate. A legitimate knockout happens. That's the only time. That's the only time that we can look at something. Even then, it could have been pre-planned. But let's say it looks legitimate. There's a real knockout that happens. It's the only time we can be confident in a in a in a like a an actual outcome. Everything else is total bull crap. I can't believe it. I can't I I can't look at boxing like that anymore. Not anymore. Ever. I, I as an adult, I don't think I've ever gone into boxing with an open mind thinking, oh, you know, this anybody could win this. Every time I watch and you tell me tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm off my rocker, maybe I'm I'm misunderstanding uh something. But here's the other thing though, is like the guys who do know boxing, the boxing pundits, the guy who is scoring this live for showtime had Davis up one round or I had him up two rounds. And like I said, you if you had him up three rounds because you gave him the first, whereas the uh, commentary team didn't, right? He didn't give anybody that first round. He gave it a 10-10. So let's say you gave Davis that round and you had him up three rounds. Three rounds. Maybe even four. Four out of the eight. No, but none of these judges were even close to that. None of them were close. The closest one was Dave Moretti, who gave Garcia the first and the sixth. Sixth, I argue, is correct. I do give, I do give him the sixth. Okay, but that wasn't even definitive. Not every judge, no judge, gave Garcia all. No, not all three judges gave Garcia the sixth. Not all of them gave him the first. I would argue that those ones were even close. Those were closer rounds. To score, right? Those are probably closer rounds. Two, three, not close. That was Garcia. Four, not close. That's Davis. Five, uh, not close. Davis. Sixth round, I uh, close, but I gave it to Garcia. Now we're at a split fight, guys. If you gave, depending on how you scored that first round, we're at a split. <laughs> Dude, come on now, come on now. Like what? When when you see this crap, like tell me, t- please. I am I'm, I'm being genuine. I am I missing something? Am am I off my rocker here? I did I miss something when I was watching this because the people on the commentary team were scoring it pretty much in line with how I did. You know, maybe I leaned a little bit too too much in one round towards Garcia. So maybe I had it. I had him up one when it should have been a, a draw, or Gar- or Davis should have been up one. Right? Maybe I gave him too much credit or something like that. Okay, but I would argue that my scorecard is closer to what it should have been than these guys who outwardly are. They, they've got to be corrupt. There's no way that they went in this with an open mind. And now, like, what, what? sorry, what I was saying at the beginning of this was I don't think I've ever gone into a boxing match and watched an event thinking anybody could win this based off of whoever is the best boxer that day. Usually, not usually, every single time I've watched an event, it's always been, barring a knockout, of course, uh, but even then, it's one of these guys has an uphill battle, and not because of a skill differential, it's because he's not supposed to win. So the only way he's getting this done is if it's so one-sided every single round that you know there's no excuse, so they can't, right? That's why this this fight was tightly contested. This match was tightly contested each round. As far as just total output and production, and like you can make an argument either way uh, and not be ridiculed for it, right? Sure. So this this is one of those examples where like they just put their thumb on the scale and they're like any close round, Davis. Davis, 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 Davis. 
How many is it? I gave him five in a row. Ooh, uh, Garcia. Davis, Davis, Davis. Dude, if this isn't a, 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 like, a picture-perfect example of these judges just screwing the pooch, just, this isn't even about not knowing, not, not their wheelhouse. This is, this is straight-up corruption. Incompetence. This is horrible. Like, I, 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 by every measure, this is awful. So you, you tell me in the comments below, when's the last time you watched a boxing event? You know, a preliminary boxing event, you know, something premier, something, or not preliminary, something, a premier boxing event with uh, well-known, uh, well-known competitors, uh, especially for, by what, at least one of them is well-known, that you went into it and you said, anybody, like you, you had, you didn't feel like it was a foregone conclusion, that you went in open-minded and you said, hey, either one of these guys on their best day has an equal chance of winning this match. When's the last time you watch that one? If you can name it, I'm I'm actually interested because I don't watch as much boxing. So maybe I, I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not as tuned into this and I mix, I miss a lot of events. That that is what it is. It's not my it's not my favorite sport. I do enjoy it when I do I watch it though. The event itself, not the shit show scoring afterwards. Is it just because I'm only tuning in for the big events or I'm only tuning in once in a while? Is that why that these ones are magnified and because they're magnified, like the results have to be preordained? Is that what's going on? And I'm only catching the the ones where corruption is the most evident. Is that what I'm doing? Is that that why I have such a bad experience with boxing? You let me know. All right, we've talked. We've talked about this enough. Every single. I'm gonna keep talking about it until until I watch a boxing match or an event that I feel is completely clean of corruption or that I don't sniff a single bit of incompetence. Right. I I won't mention it then. But if I if I see it or I hear it or anything, I'm gonna mention it. Because like my ears aren't lying, like my 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 ears aren't lying to me. My eyes aren't lying to me. If I'm seeing something and then I'm being told a different thing than what I'm seeing, right? I see the color red, and they keep telling me, "There, check out that green. Check out that green." I'm like one of us is colorblind, then, man. One of us is colorblind. All right, uh, I appreciate y'all. It means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I know this video. <laughs> It came out a little bit later. Uh, I could not stop sneezing yesterday, and I figured that wasn't going to be the best audio uh, <laughs> audio experience for everybody. So I waited till today to record it. I know it's a little bit late, and it's not going to be hit hit all the metrics. I get it. Uh, but if you could subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. That way you'll know when the next video is coming out. If you like this stuff, if you like MMA especially, I break down fights, every single UFC fight. I do Bellator. Uh, pretty much every Bellator fight now I'm doing, uh, I cover one FC, I'll cover them this weekend on Friday. I'll cover them. I'm covering all the different organizations. If you like that stuff, I break down the fights round by round. I give my score, my, my take on them. Uh, we go through scoring. We do stuff like this. We talk about corruption. We talk about, um, like, uh, incompetence in the judges, uh, technique, um, kind of like who's, who's really putting up. Um, good performances, kind of a little bit of prediction. We do all that stuff here. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, if you're looking for some UFC stuff, check out some of the last videos. You're looking for the Ryzen uh, Bellator event. Uh, that was the last video I put out. Um, other than that, I hope everybody has an amazing week, and I love y'all.